Grade 5 math number 6.6, .6, add and subtract mixed numbers with different denominators. Remember, when creating common denominators, the numerators get jealous and want to be multiplied by the same number as its denominator, okay? We have a word problem. Bob mixed 1 and 3 eighths ounces of red paint to 2 and 1 sixth ounces of yellow paint to make orange paint for a sign. How much paint is in his container now? So we think, which we need to match the denominators with multiples. 8 and 6 need to meet. We write a list of multiples for 8 and a list of multiples for 6 and see that they meet at 24. So we just change the fractions. We're going to leave the whole numbers the same when we do this problem. So where can 8 and 6 meet? At 24's house. What does 8 need to be 24? A th multiplied by 3. So the 3 numerator gets multiplied by 3 also. What does 6 need to be 24? It needs to be multiplied by 4. So its numerator wants the same thing, to be multiplied by 4. So after all our multiplication, we get 9 24 1 and 9 24 and then this becomes 2 and 4 24 Now do we have to add or subtract? Well, the problem says that he mixed them together. How much is in his container now? So that tells me, because he mixed them together, that he added them together, right? So we're going to put an addition sign here, and we're going to add these. 9 and 4, we add the numerators, is 13, and we put it over the same denominator they have, see, 24. Then we just add the whole numbers and get 3 and 13 24 See, that wasn't that hard, was it? If we need to estimate the answer, we think about the fractions. 5 6 is almost 6 6. We round the 5 6 to 6 6 or 1. 1 eighth is tiny and close to 0, so we're going to round the 1 eighth to 0. When we put the 1 with the 1 with the 6 6, it makes 2. When we put the 3 with the 0 fraction, it stays 3. So now we can add 2 and 3 and get 5 as our estimate as a whole number for these fractions. If we have to subtract, we do the same thing that we did over here with the addition one. We find multiples that 4 and 3 can meet at, they can meet at 12, and ask what, can, what does 4 need to become 12? It needs to be multiplied by 3. 3 gets jealous and it wants to be multiplied by 3. What does 3 need to become 12? It needs to be multiplied by 4. The numerator wants to be multiplied by 4 also. So now we have 3 and 9 twelfths minus 1 and 4 twelfths. We subtract the numerators, 9 minus 4 is 5, we slide down the denominator and we subtract the whole numbers and get 2 and 5 twelfths. So remember to choose the least common multiple when you're matching denominators and to multiply the numerator with the same number as the denominator because it gets jealous. We don't want to create any fights between our fractions, do we? Now writing a fraction in its simplest form means reducing it to the smallest fraction it can be. Sometimes we take up extra time when we could have done it quicker because we don't divide it by a big enough number. Here's an example. 4 eighths, if we want to put it in its simplest form, we could divide it by 2 because 2 goes into both numbers and it would become 2 fourths. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, but now it needs to be reduced again and divided by 2 again. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2. If we had just divided 4 and 8 by 4, then we would have gotten 1 right away, and we would have gotten 2 right away, and we would have saved all this extra work. See? So you want to pick the biggest number that can go into both of them when you divide. But 4 eighths will become 1 half when it's in its simplest form. 9 twelfths, both the 9 and the 12, can be divided by 3. See, we choose a number that can go into both of them. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. 9 twelfths in its simplest form is 3 fourths. See? Here's another one that some time got wasted. All this extra work got done for no reason. Tell me if you can figure out why. 8 twenty-fourths can be reduced to 2 six if we divide the top numerator and the bottom denominator by 4 and then we'd have to divide again by 2 to get it down to 1 third. What if we had divided the 8 24ths by 8 up here and 8 down here? 8 divided by 8 is 1, 
24 divided by 8 is 3, and we would have saved ourselves some trouble. So you want to pick the biggest number. The first thing you should do is ask yourself if this number can fit into there and how many times. If it won't, like here, then you try to find another number. But what if it does fit? Well, then you've saved yourself a lot of extra work. So 8 24 is one-third in its simplest form. 5 15 can be divided by a 5 with the numerator and denominator and become one-third. 5 10 can be divided by 5 and become one-half. 14 28 Now what if we had divided the 14 and the 28 by 7? We would have created extra work, wouldn't we have? 14 and 14 is 28. So we know 14 28 is one-half. We can divide both by 14. See? Pick the biggest number you can. 9 18 can be divided by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2. What if we had chosen 3? We would have had extra work. We would have had to do it a couple of times. 6 divided by 18, I mean uh, 6 18 is divided by 6 for the numerator and denominator. That'll make 1 third. What if we had chosen 3? We would have had to do extra work, okay? So, to reduce a fraction to its simplest form, divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. Keep reducing until you know you're sure it's the smallest it can be. All right? So now you know how to add and subtract numbers that have different denominators if they're mixed, and you know how to put a fraction into its simplest form by dividing the numerator and denominator by the same number. Okay? It's actually the opposite of finding a common denominator. This one you multiply to make it bigger, and this one you divide and make it smaller. Kind of neat, huh? See you next video. Bye.